Hey guys, welcome to the 2020 AP review for computer science. I'm going to show you guys everything that you need to know about arrays in a really short period of time. Um, I know that the AP uh, is going to have 60% of their problems on arrays. So let's just get to it. And I hope if you are uh, from a different school watching this video that all of you guys are doing well and best of luck on this exam and subscribe to my channel if you want to. All right. Let's get started. Everything you need to know about arrays. First is how to add up a single dimensional array. I'm going to call all my single dimensional arrays ARR1. And I'm going to, in this case, pretend that I already have an array that has 10 integers in it. For anybody um, who needs a little bit more time to process any of this, just press the pause button and take a look at the coding, okay? So ARR1 is our array. And Here's what we're going to do. First, we are going to create this guy called sum. He's going to hold zero. And basically what happens is this guy sum has a zero in here. It's going to go through the array and every single number it accesses, it's going to add it up. So what you want to do for arrays is just make sure that you have a for loop. Okay. If it's an array, we're going to use dot length. If it's an array list, we are going to use uh, dot size. Okay. Make sure we don't go out of bounds. There's no less than or equal. It's just a less than. And this is exactly how you add up a single dimensional array. Now, some people might enjoy the enhanced for loop. What the enhanced for loop does is it gets rid of this part right here, this AR1. So um, with the I. Okay. So how do we do that? We need the type int. We need to call it some other variable or word. Um, I'm going to call it A for shorthand notation. And then ARR1 is going to be the name of the array. And that's how we do it. Sum plus equals A. We no longer need this bracket in the I. So that's how we do a single dimensional array. If we want to do a two dimensional array, this is what we're going to do here. I'm going to call my two dimensional array MAT1 for matrix. And in this case, I assigned them values of four rows and five columns. Once again, this is how you instantiate this um, two-dimensional array, initialize it, um, and we're going to have int sum equals zero. What you want to do, guys, is stay consistent. I'm going to, I called it row here, but uh, row and column, and let's talk about this for a few seconds. Int row equals zero, row is less than, oh, you see I messed that up over there, dot length. I apologize. Um, and then for int column equals zero. And now Java will know that um, we're referring to the columns by this guy right here, okay? Dot length. And all we're gonna do is gonna do the same exact thing here. Sum plus equals uh, mat one row column. So remember, every time we have an array and not an array list, we're going to need some value in there. Now, number one and two are special because what it's going to do, it's going to add up the entire single array, okay? So 1 plus 2 plus 3. It's just going to give you that sum, all right? I think that's 10. And um, in this case, it will add up, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it just gives you one single value, okay? So our next um, two problems, let's take a look. How to add the columns of a two-dimensional array and return it as a single dimensional array. So this is going to be important. We are going to have a two-dimensional array and we are going to add up these columns right here. And then what's going to happen is we're going to put that number right there. So let's just say this is one, two, two, that's a five, three, 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 that's a nine. And then we're going to return this array. So if you ever want to return an array, so make sure that you guys take a look at your method. The method will have the return type. If you ever want to return um, a single dimensional array from a two dimensional array, you're going to have to create that array. So the way that we create the array is right here, int bracket column total equals new int. And now we're going to need to put a length in here. Okay, because we want to return the columns, we need the column total. How many columns are there? So that's how we're going to access the amount of columns. 
This cannot be blank, so do not forget that. You're gonna have to fill it in with something. And typically on free response problems, you don't fill it in with a, an integer like four and five and seven. You do something of dot length. All right, we're going to need this guy right here because he's gonna be our counter to go, uh, to, he's gonna be our, our counter for this guy right here, okay? So i equals zero, i equals one, i equals two. So that's why we need that there. What's gonna happen in this case, if you wanna, um, if you wanna do add up all the columns, you're going to have to hold on to column zero, okay? Remember, anytime you have a double for loop, it holds on to the first for loop and then it goes through the entire second for loop. So I'm holding on to the column for loop and then I'm gonna access the row, row zero, row one, row two, and what's happening here is I created this guy called column total, and he's right there. He has the I, so we can put that there. So it's saying at column total zero, and we want to add up um, mat one um, row column, and so this plus this plus this goes in here, and guess what, guys? I plus plus, I forgot to increase it, and that's okay. That's why we're doing this right now. How else would I get to this guy here? I need an I plus plus. Now, once it's done with the whole row, column increases by one, so now column is at one. And so that's why this guy needs to go first while we are doing a um, two-dimensional array to add columns, okay? So we need that I plus plus there um, to move along here. So this is the coding for that. I'm gonna get rid of all this so you guys can see it. Just don't forget, um, I think I was, I should have worked it out before, but that's okay. I'm gonna probably have to do that right here as well. So that's fine too. Okay, so this is how we add columns and now this is how we are going to add rows. So how do we add the rows? The only difference between those two is that now this guy is swapped, but guys, this stays the same as this, okay? You're going to have to now, instead of doing a column total, I call this row total. Take a look at the difference here. Mat one zero uh, refers to the column total. Mat one dot length refers to the um, row total. And then you're gonna follow the same exact procedure. First row, um, and then go through all the columns and add that up and make sure that we put it into this bracket. Great. Number five, um, I got this idea from the 2015 free response. If you wanted to check um, to see if two numbers in an array, so seven, three, four, um, I'm gonna do three, one. Okay, what we're going to have to do is we wanna check to see if two numbers are exactly the same in a single array. I again call my array a RR1 is I'm going to start off with the for loop int i equals zero, i is less than array one dot length minus one, um, and then i plus plus, and then array int j equals i plus one. i plus one tells you, to, so if you start at i equals zero, i plus one is gonna be the guy right next to him, okay? Remember how a for loop works? It holds on and it lets it run through all of this guy right here. Okay, so seven is gonna be our, our beginning guy, and here's my if statement. If ARR1i is equal to the guy right next door to him, so check, no, check, no, check, no, check, no. It doesn't, then what happens? This for loop gets increased by one. And so, with that being said, what I'm gonna do here is I now go on to this guy here and I check and I check and I check. I need to make sure because that I don't go out of bounds. If you don't find anybody who matches, by the time you get to the end, he's gonna go out of bounds. So you gotta make sure that um, you take care of this guy here, the minus one. This guy here is regular. So for those who get the code, great. If you need to memorize the code, then that's what you're gonna have to do. But this is how you code to see if the same numbers are within a single array. One of them starts at i equals zero, the other one starts at i plus one, 
okay? Make sure you don't go out of bounds. And now I'm going to number seven instead of number six because I realize that probably seven is more important. If you ever want to make an array list from an array or um, you know transfer everything in an array, because an array is a fixed size, an array list can um, expand or shrink. So it's probably better to get an array list. And the way that we do that is I'm going to first pretend that I have this guy called a cookbook that you're creating and it has 10, let's say recipes or whatever. And you might wanna uh, just expand this. So how do we do that? First and foremost, you have to create the array list. This is how you create an array list. You're going to have to put the type that's in here. This is gonna be the name of the array list. I just called it cook. Okay, you can call it whatever you want to, but remember that in here, the type stays, okay? Then you're gonna have a bracket uh, or parentheses and a semicolon, and that's how you do that. So array list, string, whatever you wanna call it equals new array list, string, that. Now, what's gonna happen here is I have no idea why I didn't put, you know what it was? I think that Microsoft Word, which is what I'm using, is deleting half the stuff. But okay, so for int i equals zero, i is less than cookbook.length, i plus plus, cook is this guy, dot add is the method that comes with array lists. Um, and now I did new string and cookbook i. I put new string there. You don't have to put string or int or double, but if something else like from the 2013, the download problem, new download would have to, um, I think it was called new download info. You're going to have to call it by the object name. So that's why I did that there. This will add everybody from cookbook into cook. And now you can replace it or you know replace it by using dot set or remove it um, and so on. And this is my final example for array, how to swap an entire array with another array. You only get 45 minutes for this exam, so I don't think they're gonna ask you something like this, but it's just good to know, I guess. I said, assume, you know, um, A is filled with 10 integers, B is filled with 10 integers. What you have to do is create a temp, right? A temporary placeholder. And everybody has to be with, filled with the same exact size. So once you do this, we know it's filled with zeros. What you do is you do a for loop and you take everybody in A and plug it into the um, temp. So now temp is holding A. Then you take everybody in B and put it into A. And now B is in A. And now we need B to have. So B gets placed, puts all its um, integers into A. And now I need all of A's integers into B. And the way that I do that is I go back to temp and I do that. So. I put a dot length here, b dot length, temp dot length. You don't have to do that. Um, they're all the same length. Otherwise, you would get an error um, unless unless um, they were filled with zero. So mm, maybe you won't get an error. But these are the main um, array types. So I hope it was helpful. I'm really sorry that I went quick. I would, didn't want to make this video too much.